everyone, Chef Kimberly here with my good friend, Chef David. Hello, good to be back. Hi, hi everyone. So we're at Purge Costa Mesa today where we just installed the brand new, beautiful 400 series Gaganel steam oven. Today we'll be showcasing a nice fall, um, but you know, holiday inspired, but you could do it all year long uh, menu today. What do we have going on today, Chef David? Um, we have a variety of great things. Uh, first off, we have a creme anglaise, and the creme anglaise is beautiful, velvety, delicious. Uh, uh, we'll be doing that sous vide. We also have uh, some wonderful vegetables. We have some mm -hmm. squash that we'll be doing, uh, also sous vide, and uh, that's going to have yeah and beets as well. Uh, the beets will also go sous vide, and actually uh, some of these are going to go in together at the same time. So yeah, and fantastic. then we also have some lobster that we'll be doing. Um, and then as our main course, we're going to be doing a nice braised duck that we're going to be braising in its own fat. So you're just going to get all that fat in there. <laughs> yeah, a little bro broil at the end as well. Yeah, right? and then we're going to have some Swiss chard that we're going to lay that on top of there just to give it that nice crunch. So a lot of good flavors going into this, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay, so while you're getting started on that, I'm going to go ahead and chop up these beets. Again, like he said, we're going to be doing some of these things at the same time. Uh, all at the same temperature, except the creme anglaise we're going to be doing at 180, Yeah, correct? this is at 180 degrees. You really shouldn't go lower than that mm -hmm. on this. Um, and so this is going to take approximately 50 minutes. Uh, and all I have to do is just kind of lightly mix my ingredients together and then put it in our sous vide bag. Um, just pop that in the oven at 180 degrees mm -hmm. for 50 minutes. And all I have to do is agitate the bag maybe once during the cooking period. Uh, once that's done, uh, I, I throw it into uh, uh, some ice water, uh, just bring it to a cooler temperature, pop it in the refrigerator, maybe overnight. This can be done ahead of time. Yeah, right, so you could do this the day before, I don't Absolutely. know, say like a holiday party or you know Thanksgiving party. Absolutely, and, uh, and you have essentially your prepared ice cream uh, base. Uh, which you can actually flavor it in any way that you like, but we're just gonna stick with vanilla today. Yeah, that's gonna go on top of a really nice galette that I'm gonna be doing later on today. Oh yeah, we didn't mention that. We forgot about dessert. That's right. It's a dessert. surprise. Who it's a surprise. <laughs> um, it's a galette we're doing with pears and some blackberries, this beautiful chocolate ricotta at the bottom of it. Um, it's gonna be so nice with a little bit of that creme anglaise poured on top. Right. Um, and right. I love this method because I don't have to be sitting over the stove. So I'm gonna go ahead. These are our beets right here that we're gonna be sous vide. I'm gonna put them in separate bags because I do not want the colors to bleed. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab them over here. Okay. And typically when you're sous vide, uh, you would need to get like a sealer, right? Like a, a sealer, vacuum sealer. Right. Um, Gaganel actually has their own vacuum sealer that you could get installed either right under your oven to make it convenient, or you could get installed anywhere in your house. So I think that is a pretty cool tool to have. Mm -hmm. I've, I've enjoyed using it. Absolutely. <laughs> These yeah. are the candy stripe feet. So uh, the trick I think you told me was to make sure that nothing's piled on top, right? Right. You want to actually make sure that they're pretty flat. You want to don't want to overwhelm what's in there. So okay. So I'll put this aside and we'll go ahead and vacuum seal out, vacuum seal everything together. Um, so I kind of want to watch David do this. <clears throat> and so this you can strain before and after or just after if you like. I'm just going to choose to strain it afterwards, and this is just going to go straight in the bag. So and that's just milk, heavy cream. Milk, heavy cream, uh, one cup of each, uh, four egg yolks, uh, and I and I just uh, we were able to find some uh, beautiful vanilla. Uh, so what we're going to do is cook this at 180 degrees for 50 minutes, uh, and uh, depending on what vegetable you have, some of the more firm vegetables, uh, you want to go ahead and seal them a little tighter, as mm -hmm. this one for example, uh, and you maybe cook them for a little bit longer period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, higher temperatures, anywhere between 160, 180, 190, maybe 200, yeah. uh, depending on the firmness that you're seeking to get. Uh, and then this, of course, like as I said, 50 minutes. Uh, you want to make sure that it's food safe as well, whatever temperatures you're using. All right, so let's oh. go ahead and add that in there. Absolutely. So all I need to do is on the left side, I just set the mode that I want. In this case, I preset it for sous vide cooking. And on the right hand side, I dial the degree, the temperature that I'd like, and I set 180 degrees, and that should be good to go. And all I need to do now is set my timing, and I'll go ahead and set that time for 50 minutes, and that would be done at that point. Just let it do its thing. It was that it? easy. Set it, set it and <laughs> let it go. Yeah, yeah, let it go. Set just it and let it go. Do the rest of it. It's really <laughs> great when you want to prepare other things, and you can just set that and just have your dessert already being prepared, essentially. Yeah, and then while that's going, we're gonna go ahead and get our squash prepared. So we have some nice carnival squash here, 
And then Those we have great. some acorn squash that are going, like I love these beautiful colors. Look at that, how beautiful that's gonna look in that vacuum seal. So these are gonna be vacuum sealed as well too. And while I'm doing that, David, you wanna work on your lobster Absolutely, dish. Absolutely, yes. Which is, I am so excited for. It's gonna be like this Asian kind of infused lobster um, that could be served as a side dish or an appetizer. These, like you said, they're a little large side on the large side. So it could be like a nice side dish. Same thing with the acorn squash, a nice little side dish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in there. Okay, so I have that going here. Probably won't use all of it. Okay. okay. So with this, what I did ahead of time is I did this beautiful brown butter, which is basically I'm just cooking butter on the stove until you get like this really nice, um, kind of like auburnish color, kind of like my hair, right? Yeah. Like my yeah. hair. <laughs> That's beautiful. a good example. Um, so I did that and I fused it with a little bit of hazelnuts and sage. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop that in here. This is really nice if you keep that in your fridge too. You could use it for anything like chicken or other vegetables. I like to always have some brown butter. Some I do like lemon zest or something in there to give it another flavor. <clears throat> that goes a long way. I love the lemon zest, yeah. yeah. And then so what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking a part of my ingredient actually and I'm utilizing it to uh, keep my lobster tail nice and straight for presentation. Once I'm done, I want to be able to remove it from the shell and not have it be curved and curled up. It looks more beautiful when it's nice and extended. So I'm going to use a little half slice of lemongrass uh, and I'm going to tie it with my butcher twine and get that uh, in the bag as well with uh, some other ingredients that I have. So I have that right there just off to the side. I'm going to take some shallot. I'm just going to slice it up a little bit. That little slice. So again, and I feel like when you're doing sous vide, I feel like the flavors get so much more infused into whatever ingredient you're using. They do, they do, because you're look, cooking at those really low temperatures, you have an opportunity to have those cell walls of whatever it is that you're cooking uh, open up and really accept and just receive all of those flavors that just marry right into your product. And a little trick too that we like to do is go ahead and put everything in your vacuum seal the night before. So that alone, that's gonna kind of almost marinate it, right? Correct, correct. Uh, and that's really uh, another really great aspect of uh, the vacuum drawer as well. It's not just a vacuum drawer, it, it is a preservation system. Uh, it can be used for canning. You can actually preserve some red wine if you'd like as well. It has Ooh, a variety of, uh, yeah, my language, variety yeah. of benefits. Um, uh, you can freeze as low as a minus 40 degrees and you can cook as high as 212 degrees in these uh, uh, food safe bags as well. So yeah, you have a lot that you can do with this. Yeah, it's right, very so versatile. I threw my shallots in there and I have a little bit, uh, it's about two tablespoons of brown sugar. The sugar just makes everything nice. I love that recipe. I'm crying because it's so delicious. We have staff here to eat. The shots just hit my eye right now. <laughs> I thought my glasses were gonna work as goggles. Okay, so then I'm gonna take some fresh, even though the butter has some sage in, um, infused into it, I wanna take some fresh, kind of just get some slices of this going. I love all these flavors. I love squash, I love squash season. It's one of my favorite. We got sage, then I got some nice hazelnuts that we're gonna go ahead and chop up and throw in there as well. I know it seems like a lot of ingredients, but I'm t trust me, it's so worth it. The flavors that you get, it's gonna be amazing. So I'm just give it a quick chop, and it's not too small. I just kinda want like big chunk pieces in there. And my dish is pretty much done. So That's we have our squash nice. right there. And once we vacuum Perfect. seal this, and then it gets in the oven, the butter is gonna be nice and melted. Nice little glaze with the sugar. That's gonna be amazing. Mm -hmm. Actually, even those that that liquid is just gonna be just oh, so Oh yeah, the liquid good. that the squash is gonna yeah. be. Yeah, that that's leaking. just yeah. And so here, what I have some uh, chile de árbol uh, is one of my ingredients, and we have uh, uh, also some scallions sit in there. We also for a little marinade, we're also gonna use uh, sesame seed oil, and that's really all we need. I think with the lemongrass, the, the lime. Mm. Uh, zest and everything that's in here. Nice I think we're gonna have flavors. a fantastic, yeah, yeah, yeah. great All profile. Right. So it's been about 50 minutes. Our caramel glaze is ready to get pulled out. All of our ingredients are nicely vacuum sealed. Look at this. Just, just hold it up right here. Yep. You, guys, you guys getting that? All right, so that's ready to go. So let's go ahead and pull that out. Just a little mm -hmm. touch of the screen there. And, okay, and then that's gonna go on an ice bath and then mm -hmm. inside the fridge, it's gonna wait for our nice beautiful galette once we're done with that. So we're gonna go ahead and put these in there. You're gonna go ahead and put it on the rack? Yeah, this is gonna All go right. directly on the rack and then those can go on a tray and right. uh, put those on the next level. 
and that should work out just fine. Okay, so keeping these nice and separate, we have our beets here and our acorn squash right here. Go ahead and put that on the top. Right. And what temperature are we using for this? And so for this, we're going to go down to a 147. I think that should work. Uh, again, this is one degree accurate. Uh, and we're going to go, I think we're going to go 30 because we have that uh, squash in yeah, there. We want it to get nice and, nice and tender. Because yeah, yeah. we're just going to eat that right out of the bag. Well, not like savages right out of the bag, but we're going to put it on a nice plate and then eat it, eat it up for a little snack. So, okay, so we're going to let that go. Yep. Set our timer. And I think that'll be just... Perfect. So now I have our ingredients for our duck dish. We're going to go ahead and prepare that while that's cooking in there. So we have a little bit of orange. We're going to do the orange zest, some fennel, some ginger, um, fennel seeds. I mean, what else do we have? We have pepper flakes, a little Gosh. bit of star anise, and some um, oh, cloves, cloves, right? Cloves, cloves absolutely, yeah. yeah. So you're just going to get that beautiful, like, fall flavor. I mean, ginger and spices. And this everything is everything nice. And basically, the functions we're using for this is we're going to be braising this. And we're going to be using the 80% humidity in the oven to assist with softening up and just tenderizing that meat so mm -hmm. perfectly. Uh, and so then it's almost confined too in its exactly. own grease. So we're just going to use that same instead of buying like a huge bucket of duck fat that you can purchase, um, believe it or not, we are going to let that just kind of confine in its own fat. So the fat that it's creating already is just going to mm -hmm. be sitting in that braising, um, beautiful mm -hmm. with all the spices infusing in there. Mm -hmm. So I think duck is a kind of like an elevated, very like sexy, um, you know, holiday or fall dish that you could do mm -hmm. instead of turkey or, you know, the usual ham. I think that's why we chose it, right? We yeah. kind of want that yeah. sleek kind yeah. of meal something that you can different, have. different, something that's just a super flavorful that you can do. And I feel uh, like some people might be intimidated by it, yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, but it's really no need. It's really super easy. It's just adding your ingredients uh, to your pan and that's it. Letting it go. Let it and go. Speaking of pans, we're actually using the Gaganau roaster that you could purchase. It's an accessory. Of all the accessories that Gaganau has, that is my absolute favorite. Today we're using it for this, but typically that's a great uh, place to make like a, we're a tart. We're using it three times. Today. That's right. We're doing the duck in here, and once we take it out of there, we're going to do the sauce that goes along with the duck. And once that's all done, we're going to be using it for the dessert. Right. So it's multi-purpose. It's definitely worth it, right? Right. Absolutely. I love that thing. And then while he's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and chop up some stuff for him and give a little assist. We're just going to take the zest of the orange. And actually, this recipe can also be done with uh, turkey if you prefer turkey, mm -hmm. obviously, chicken. Uh, braising, you know, it's just very fuss-free, uh, which is why we love this, is you can literally just let it sit in the oven and with all your favorite ingredients. And I feel like with the Gaganel steam oven, it's not that hard to get professional results, right? No, no, I mean, <laughs> I you mean could, yeah, I mean, don't need to be a, a Michelin star chef. So what I'm doing here is I'm just ch kind of sectioning off the garlic in quarter pieces, and then I kind of take my knife, just run it through, because I want that flavor to just to infuse very well. I want to kind of release all that ginger juice. All right, so once you're done with that, we're going to go ahead and just put it on top, right? Yes. And we're ut utilizing everything. It has a little extra fat on here. What we did is we rendered it off a little bit. So with that fat, we're going to toss the beets in. The beets we're keeping real simple because it's just going to go on the side of the duck. It's just some duck fat, some nice salt and pepper on there. Kind of let the, the beets do its own own thing. Right. right. This, we're just going to score that. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we're going to just separate... Uh, Separate our pieces here as well. Yeah. Our... I want the legs. Definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm a dark meat kind of girl. Actually, I love dark meat as well. <laughs> uh, so here we're just uh, separating here at the joints and just drop them in there. Just pop that there. Mm -hmm. Usually it's easier to remove uh, these when you can expose the, the joint as I just did by kind of giving it a little pop. We don't even need to season because we already have all our seasonings. It's just going to go in there. But we can, if you don't mind, Chef. We're going to do salt and pepper. Or salt, just salt. salt, right? Yeah. And that should be plenty. Well, I like a good amount of salt. My joint. <laughs> Here we go. And then we're going to start off with the fat side down. And then uh, in between about 40 minutes in the cooking, we're going to give it a little flip. Now we're just going to go ahead and throw all the ingredients on top. Perfect. The smell. I wish you guys could smell all of this. There we go. Get this out of our way. Oh my gosh. Beautiful colors too. Yeah. It's all about the color. Yeah. So here we have a little bit of pepper flakes. 
We did some fennel seeds to give a little bit more of that fennel flavor. And then a couple of star anise and some cloves. And that's it, and we're done. And we're gonna go, go ahead, after that's done, we're gonna go ahead and let that brace for about an hour and a half. Gorgeous, All right, gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah. So it's been about, what, 40 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. 40 minutes have passed, and our lobster, our beets, and our acorn squash is all ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out and start plating. All right, so David, you know, get the door, the door for me like a gentleman, yes, thank you. Yes. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this tray out. And it's not that hot, but you could use towels, you know. I've burned my hands a few times, so I don't feel a thing anymore. So this is a super easy dish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just cut it right open. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my squash and just lay it on this plate. So nice. look at that color, isn't oh, that beautiful? Pretty. That's pretty. Just gonna go ahead and, and lay um, them out. And what we'll do is we'll take some of this like extra um, shallots in there and just kind of pour it on top. Mmm, smells so good. That brown butter is amazing. Yeah, that smells amazing. It's like yeah. that nutty uh, fall smell. Oof. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is take a little bit of this and just sprinkle it on top. So I'm just gonna take some of these broccoli sprouts, and these I got at a farmer's market too. Gorgeous. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on top. Can you hold that for me? Yeah, that's kind of need to pull those apart a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Okay. And lightly there. There you go. Beautiful. All right. And then take some pomegranate seeds, give it a nice little bite to it. And just those colors are going to look so pretty against each other. And that's it. And then you have yourself a little nice uh, side dish or a nice little appetizer to get started with. Um, you Amazing. could also toast some hazelnuts and put that on top of there too. But I think this is just so beautiful. Look at that. Very and nice. now we're going to get our lobster ready. Go ahead, David, take it away. Okay. Again, we uh, cooked these at 140 and we did actually closer to 40 minutes actually mm -hmm. today. So you could and do so, about like 40 minutes or depending what size you have, um, always go off until like it's nice and tender and, and cooked all the way. The shell turns a, a different color. So ours were pretty large, so we did 40 minutes. And as you can see, they pretty much retain their shape. Uh, so it's really nice and flat and which I prefer for presentation. So mm -hmm. yeah, really, really pretty. So we're gonna go ahead and cut right through the shell here and uh, snip right through it. And that should allow us to pull this out. So we're just Loosen gonna pop up. these up. Yeah, that looks so yeah. just pop, pull that back a little bit. Close that a little bit. On top. Beautiful. All right. Nice. Okay, so. so I'm gonna need to take that with me. <laughs> <laughs> I want that yeah. whole piece to myself. So let's just go ahead and drop that here. And another one at the front. Nice. And uh, we're gonna drop a few of these. Furukake? Oh, to the furukake too, we're gonna put that on top. Those are so pretty, I love that color. Yeah, definitely furukake is gonna go on top. I just wanted to drop a few of these mm -hmm. beautiful wedges on there. So pretty. And a little bit of that nasturtium. Pops them up here on top. Right there. And we also have that furikake mix. We have uh, ses black sesame seeds and uh, toasted sesame seeds. And nori, right? A little nori. bit of nori, nori as nori well, yep. Take some of these and just kind of drop them ever so gingerly right in front. Mm -hmm. And there we have it. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, Really so now you have a, either, this could actually be like a starter. This like app, one yeah. plate by itself. I'm happy right? with that. Like, I don't need anything else really, but uh, that's it's beautiful. Yeah. So now that we have all this done, we're going to go ahead and get uh, our duck inside the oven. So go ahead yeah. and put this off to the side. Okay. So all we have to do here is just move the knob here, the right, the left knob. We're going to switch our mode and our mode is now going to be convection mode with humidity, and we're gonna use 80% uh, humidity. And we're also gonna bump up the temperature to uh, 275. And this is going to run for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And then and we'll- in between we're gonna flip it. Up, yep. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just pop that in the oven. As our duck is cooking for about an hour and a half, we're gonna get ready for our other um, kind of side dishes that go along with it, right? So exactly. we have a little bit of uh, Swiss or char right here. We're gonna go ahead and chop that up. David, if you would do the Absolutely. honors. 
My then pleasure. we have some fennel, some leeks, a little bit of fennel, fennel leaves that we're gonna chop up. I'll go ahead and do that. So we're gonna go ahead and put everything in a bowl together. We'll wrap a few more of these together. Throw in our little onions. We have our pearl onions. You can use cipollini onions or just regular onion if, if you don't have or can't find pearl onion. They're very specific. I've only seen them in like a few stores. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not the easiest thing to find. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set that aside while we wait for our duck to finish. Okay, and next we're gonna do our beets. Again, like I said, all of this is going in the oven at the same time. So we're kind of just getting it ready to go. We're gonna throw it in there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut these open. Keep these simple, just a little salt and pepper, a little bit of duck fat. I think beets have like enough flavor, right? Oh yeah, they're so delicious already. And the thing with beets is their colors bleed a lot. So the reason why we're keeping it separate is because again, we just want those vibrant colors at the end when exactly. we're plating. So yep. we're just kind of trying to keep everything a little separate. Yep. Keep their character, keep everything separate. Put them together at the end, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just a little salt and pepper. Yep. Can't forget that. Yep. And I think yeah. we're good. Yeah. So again, just put this off to the side. So once that comes out, we're ready to go and we can eat in like 15 minutes. Um, then I have some ingredients here that we're gonna be doing. This kind of like this black cherry cranberry uh, glaze or sauce. Yeah, yeah, right, it could be a little sauce for the side of your duck. That is also gonna cut into that citrus, the sweetness of that, it's gonna be so good. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the cranberries. This is about a quarter cup of bourbon and then a quarter cup of water. Um, some orange zest and orange juice. And again, in that same um, cast roaster lid, we're gonna go ahead and just toss it in there, mix it up, and that's all we gotta do. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. We just it's let it cook. super simple. We're gonna go ahead and check in our duck. It's been about an hour and a half. I think it's hour ready, half. right? Yep. All right, I think it's let ready. me go ahead and pull that Let's out. That. Oh man, this that. looks so good. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. These are pretty heavy, so if you do have one of these at home, please be careful. There's our duck right there, pretty much ready to go. All that's left is to throw it under the broiler real quick to get that skin nice and crispy. Right now it's nice and tender. There you go, sir. Thank so what we're gonna much. do is we're actually gonna put this right under the duck and let that cook together. Let's go ahead, David. All of it, just let it go. Just like so, a nice little bed. Mm -hmm. Well, it smells great already. Right? That. I'm gonna take our duck. Place that on top there. This is almost like a one pan meal. Those are my favorite. When you're in a hurry, you just do a little one pan meal. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and insert that and then we're also gonna at the same time do our beets. Let it go. Now, my favorite part. All right, so some of those flavors we're gonna be using for our sauce. We got our cranberries, our um, black cherries. And these are the black cherries that got frozen, the cranberries are fresh. We're gonna go ahead, do some bourbon in there. Do you mind zesting that in there for me? Uh, absolutely. A little bit of sugar, about two tablespoons, because you want this to be a nice little sweet sauce. So then I have some ginger here and a little bit of nutmeg, about a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg that I'm just gonna go ahead and pour in there. That Love nutmeg. nutmeg. Oh yeah. That's gonna go really, really well that with ginger this. ginger and the nutmeg. Yep. Do a little Ooh, pinch of amazing. salt. Okay, and I think uh, we're good. We're good. Do you yep. mind cutting that and then squeezing the, the juice no in there? No problem. All right, so we have all our ingredients in our cast roaster top. I'm just gonna give it a quick little stir because I want all of that um, zest to kind of get mixed in there. There you go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put nice. it on, again, one of these universal pans. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put that on top. Chef David, would you like to put that in yeah, there? Absolutely, let's get this oven open. Pop All that right, in there. Go ahead and set that timer to 15 minutes. All right. Get that going. Go ahead and set that. So it's been about 15 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and pull everything out and get to plating, right? Right, let's do it. Oh yeah, All you right. hear that sizzle? Oh, beautiful. So I'll go ahead and pull the beets out. I got the beet. I got the, <laughs> that's how it goes, right? <laughs> and this. Oh, looks I'm delicious. I'm gonna close the door for you. Crispy. Yeah, so Very you nice. stuff in. Oh my gosh, you That's just so hear that pretty. sound of that skin. <laughs> so we're gonna just set that there just like so. Just a little bit of that. Oh man, you get like some crispiness on the top and then you get that nice little soft char on the bottom. 
So we're just gonna top that right on there, just like so. Yay. Just like so. I'm so excited. And some. And then you got yourself a nice little duck so, plate with some char on there. Either way you look at it, it's very, very pretty. So. All right. So now let's go, go ahead and, and do this there. family style. Very like nice. This. Yeah. That's still it really so hot. So good. And that way you could just like pass this around your table and then everyone could get how much they would like. Beats galore. Mm -hmm. Let's pour that right on top, not on the table, guys, on <laughs> top, don't listen to me. <laughs> I'll catch some here if you need me to, no problem. <laughs> this is amazing. So really kind of a duck confit without really intending one. Now you have your family meal style for you. All right, so now for our sweet treat, we're doing a pear and bl uh, blackberry galette. So I have my pie dough right here that I did the day before, just let it kind of go um, stay in the cooler, get nice and solid, have our butter pieces in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll this out. David, I'm gonna have you slice the pears. Okay. Um, so we have crimson and barlet pears today. We're only using two of them. We're just gonna go ahead and fan them out here. It's gonna look beautiful. And we're gonna be baking this on convection bake at 450. So now we're actually not using any steam, right? No steam at all. No we're using this all. just like you would a regular oven. And then what else I did is I took some ricotta cheese and I added, it's about four ounces of ricotta and then about two ounces of melted, um, just semi-sweet chocolate to kind of give it that chocolate flavor. So we're gonna have that chocolate, hazelnut, a little bit of pear in there. Okay. All right, so once that's nice and done, you wanna kind of keep it at about quarter inch, not too thin. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ricotta filling Put it on the bottom. And you can leave this out for a little bit before you start assembling, so that way it's a little easier to spread. I'm just gonna go ahead and take that, ooh, yeah. Look at that. And I'm just gonna leave like an edge, almost like you're doing a pizza, like you're building a pizza right now. So I'm gonna take my pears, I'm just gonna kind of fan them out like this. I'm just gonna go back here. So the point of this is to look super pretty <laughs> once you take it out of the yeah. oven, right? Right. So just kind of separate them. So what I'm gonna start doing now is I'm gonna go ahead and fold this over. And I'm kind of just keeping my finger there, letting that dough fold over on my finger. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We want that like really nice rustic look. Yeah, you have uh, your little egg wash that you're gonna do there. Yeah, I'm do some, some egg sugar. wash, some sugar. Fantastic. That big crystal sugar. Okay, just go ahead and put it there. And I have some butter melting on the stove right now that we're gonna go ahead and pour that over. How's that looking, David? Looks pretty good. Yeah, nice and melted? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Just about fully melted. Let me know. All when. right. Just kind of putting that on there. That's gonna give it a nice golden color. There you go. Then I'm gonna take this crystal sugar, just kind of sprinkle it on top. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this butter that David nicely melted for me. And then I have a little mixture here. It's about two tablespoons of brown sugar, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and then a quarter teaspoon of um, cardamom, so ground cardamom. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sprinkle that on top. If you wanna help me pick I can, it up. I was gonna say, yeah, let's you, do it looks like you need two Ready? hands. Hold on, let me get a good handle on it. One, three, two, three. Two, three, and Very on nice. there. There you go, beautiful. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven. You wanna go ahead and do the honors for yeah. me? Yeah, thank you. So we have a little uh, rack in there that we're just gonna set this right on top. It's gonna go in for about 30 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes until it's nice and golden brown. Get a nice flaky crust. All right, my galette is pretty much done. Yes. That crust is nice and flaky. Let's yeah, take it out. It looks great. Yeah, it smells ooh, really, really good in ooh, here. Ooh. Oh, it looks so beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is kind of just put it up here. Wow, let's see the that. bottom part of that. Can you take a look at that? Yeah, look at that. Nice browning at the bottom. So I'm just gonna do Ooh, kind of like crunch. pie slices. I know, look at that crunch. Ooh. Those pears smell so good. So what we're gonna do is just gonna pour that creme anglaise on top of it. Yes. And let's then do we it. get to try it. <laughs> All right, you do the honors with the creme anglaise. All right, which slice should we get, David? Oh gosh, mm. I don't know, that one speaks to me right there. And that, I that was looking too. at this one. All right, bon Let's appetit. Go. Yes. I like the crust, so right? Oh I my gosh, the try. crust Look is like. the steam coming out of that thing still, wow. Do not burn your mouth. Maybe not, a, yeah. Get a bit of that. that is so That's good. 
I think the sweetness is like perfect. You have the natural sugars of the pears, like a little bit of top of brown sugar and mm -hmm. cinnamon on top. And those crimson, those dark crimson pears are just so floral and beautiful. Look at that flakiness. Do you see that flakiness? It's oh my just goodness. so perfect. All right, Chef <clears throat> David, thank you for joining me. It's always a pleasure. Always I always have pleasure. so much fun with Thanks you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for, for having me. It was just <laughs> wonderful. Now, if you want to come on in and see this for yourself, our new Gaganel 400 series, you can come visit Costa Mesa or one of our other showroom locations. We have Glendale, Rancho Mirage, um, San Diego UTC, and one of our new showrooms opening up in Cedros. Um, so please go to perch.com, set an appointment um, so you can meet one of our great associates to help you out with anything you need. Thank you for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> go back in. This is one in a series of showcase videos that you can watch on our Perch YouTube channel.